Good morning, children. Today we are going to start a new chapter that is transport in plants. Children, you know plants require water and food for the growth. So for its normal functioning, two internal transport is there. Now water and minerals, which is absorbed from the soil by the roots, this is transported. throughout the plant body uh, this is called transport of water and minerals and the food which is manufactured in the leaf by the process of photosynthesis it is carried to all the living parts of the plant and it is known as translocation of food and substances which are transported in vascular plants they are water mineral nutrients organic nutrients and plant growth hormones they are transported throughout the plant body for a short and both long distances now their direction of transportation now plants show two types of direction unidirectional and multidirectional or bidirectional unidirectional transport is done through xylem vessels because it is always in unidirectional it occurs as upward flow of water from roots to stem and absorption of mineral nutrients and uh, movement of this mineral nutrients it is done by multidirectional transport now this water which is absorbed in the plants it should be carried out throughout the plant body so there are two types of transport mechanism which are found in vascular plants the transport over short distances and transport over long distances or bulk transport so short distances means the movement of molecules within the cell across the cell membranes and from cell to cell within the tissue now this does not require any energy so this is done by diffusion facilitated diffusion osmosis imbibition or when it energy is used then it is by active transport Now, transport over long distances or bulk transport, it is the movement of substances from one place of the plant body to the other part of the plant body, and it is carried out to all the plants of the parts of the plant from root hair till the top tip of the shoot. So, transport over long distances, it can be done by special type of cells or vascular system. They are known as the xylem and phloem now this long distance transportation is also known as bulk transportation and the bulk movement of substances through vascular system in plants it is known as translocation so let us start with transportation over short distances or cell to cell movement now the cell to cell movement is done by uh, following uh, processes so passive transport or diffusion facilitated transport tra diffusion or by active transport passive transport means children without energy without the use of energy and active transport means use of energy is there so this passive transportation it is done by diffusion process and you know that diffusion it is a slow process it is passive in nature and it is slow process and this diffusion is done by movement of the particle uh, molecules from the region of their higher concentration to the region of their lower concentration that is it is along the concentration gradient without any use of energy so what are the characteristics of diffusion now this diffusion takes place from one part of the cell to the other part of the cell or from over short distances or we can say that intercellular spaces of the leaf to the outside or from outside to inside of the cell some other characteristics of diffusion are that it is not dependent on the living system that means uh, diffusion does not depend on living system and the process continues till the molecules on both the side gets evenly distributed Now diffusion also occurs in liquids and gases only because it does not occur in solid because liquid and gases they show movement by the kinetic energy so this is also known as entropy driven movement so what are the significance of this diffusion to plants 
why why this diffusion is used because diffusion is a process in which exchange of gases takes place so it is very important for the plant it means that whatever gases movement is there in the plant body it is done by diffusion you know that carbon dioxide coming inside the plant body oxygen is going out of the plant body so this is all done by diffusion process now absorb transpiration it also helps in the transpiration process because in transpiration water is lost from the upper part of the plant body in the form of water vapor so it also involves diffusion process because as soon as this water is going out from the plant body and diffusion into the atmosphere so rate of transpiration will be more so diffusion also helpful in absorption because uh, during passive intake of the salts the ions with they are absorbed by the diffusion process now diffusion also helps in translocation of food it also helps in pollination how it also helps in pollination because you know that plant flowers they have scent they have aroma in it and this aroma when it gets uh, diffused into the atmosphere then the pollinating agents like a uh, insects they come across with the flowers uh, flowers and they sit on the flowers and due to this pollination occurs now this diffusion also results in intercellular transportation that means in between the cell to cell uh, between two cells the transportation require diffusion now diffusion also helpful in distribution of water and solutes that means whatever solutes whatever uh, water is absorbed by the plants it is done by diffusion so here comes the factors which affect rate of diffusion that means whether the rate of diffusion increases or whether the rate of diffusion decreases so these are the factors which helpful in rate of diffusion now solubility of substance in lipids now the substance which are soluble in lipids that means they are hydrophobic in nature so they diffuse readily in the lipid bilayer of cell membrane and the substance which are not are uh, diffusing in the lipids they are hydrophilic in nature they cannot pass through this lipid layer now the size of the molecules also uh, gets the rate of diffusion because if the size of the molecules they are uh, high or greater then they are not able to pass through the pores so diffusion process will also get affected now charged molecules molecules now these charged molecules and ions they passes through the ionophores or the charge channels now these small and charged and poorer molecules they can diffuse through this bilipid layer now concentration concentration gradient now molecules and ions which are moving along the cell membrane through the concentration gradient that is from the high region to the lower region they pass through this concentration gradient from from the cell membrane now temperature it also helpful in the rate of diffusion so increase in temperature it leads to rate of diffusion it also increases because it increases the kinetic energy of the diffusion particles now density of diff diffusion substances now the rate of diffusion it is inversely proportional that means if the density increases then the rate of diffusion also decreases if the density uh, decreases then the rate of diffusion increases so now this larger molecules so this is known as gram's law of diffusion so what is it the rate of diffusion inversely proportional to the square root of density of the diffusion substance now this is known as gram's law of diffusion now density of the diffusion medium it also affects the rate of diffusion now higher the density of diffusion medium lower the rate of diffusion okay now gas molecules you know they diffuse rapidly as fast in the vacuum rather than the air so rate of diffusion it is also inversely proportional to the density of diffusing medium now diffusion pressure gradient or dpg now dpg it also develops by the concentration of diffusion substance now the higher is the difference in the concentration of diffusion substance the two solution the higher will be the diffusion process or the diffusion pressure gradient now the this rate of diffusion it is directly proportional to the diffusion pressure gradient and inversely proportional to the distance between the two so here is the diagram children which shows the rate of diffusion or the different mechanism of diffusion now here see this is a simple diffusion okay this is a cell membrane okay now this cell membrane outer cell membrane inner cell membrane and direct diffusion is going on from inside to outside from outside so inside now some facilitated diffusion channels are also there and this facilitated diffusion channel they are known as 
channel protein so here see this channel protein is there and through this channel protein macromolecules they are entering inside this cell membrane now through some other carrier proteins are also there in the cell membrane and these carrier proteins once they get this uh, diffusion particles inside it then it makes that diffusion particles according to the size and then it transfer this particle to the inside of the cell membrane or to the intercellular spaces so this cell membrane they have the channel proteins and the carrier proteins and which are meant for the absorption of the uh, macromolecules or the ions which are or the charge ions which are not uh, diffused through the direct diffusion okay now next is facilitated so this facilitated diffusion children now this facilitated diffusion will learn in next class okay thank you and have a nice day